right. So let's talk about uh, quantum mechanical operators now. Um, so quantum mechanical operators must be linear. So the operators that we use in quantum mechanics to represent properties, remember we said at the beginning that uh, properties in, qu in quantum mechanics, properties, for every property of a system, there's a corresponding operator. Okay, those operators must be linear and they must be Hermitian. Okay, so the question is, we already know what a linear operator is. What's a Hermitian operator? Okay, a Hermitian operator is defined this way. Operator A is said to be a Hermitian operator if for any pair of arbitrary well-behaved functions, okay, f and g, so f and g can be any pair of functions, this integral right here must be equal to this integral, the complex conjugate of this integral on the right. Okay, let's do this step by step. This, can, this equation just by looking at it one time, the first time, can be overwhelming. It's not really that hard. So let's do it, break it down step by step. Okay. If you operate A on function G, okay, and then that will just give you another function, right? And then you multiply that by the complex conjugate of function F. And then you integrate over all space. You should get the same answer. Well, what, 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 would you, what would this give you? That will give you a number, right? It's a definite integral. If you integrate over all space, it's a definite integral. That should give you the same result if you do it the other way. And what's the other way? You apply a hat first on f instead of g, and then you multiply it by the complex conjugate of g, okay? And then you take the complex conjugate of the result. If those two sides are equal, if both of those expressions come out to the same, regardless of what f and g are, then you say operator A is Hermitian. Okay? Uh, the Dirac bracket notation is a simple, uh, a very simple abbreviation for this, is to write it this way, f, a, g, okay? And then you have your brackets right there. So we say... Uh, if you write it this way, then that means operate uh, operator A on G and then multiply it by the complex conjugate of F, okay, and then integrate over all space. So that this is a shortcut for that one, for this one right here. And the, these two mean the same thing, okay? Uh, it's here's another way of looking at it. But what you're really saying here is this. Uh, this is called a bracket, right? Uh, and these things are, you know, to make it easy to remember, imagine that symbol right there. That's called, your, you can call that your cat operator. So what does that do to a function? If you put a function inside the cat, inside the cat operator, all it does is it multiplies it by one. Um, it's an identity operator, okay? So putting a function inside the cat operator, all you're doing to it is multiplying it by one. It's an identity operator. So the cat operator is really an identity operator, okay? So Imagine this as a series of three operators. You do a cat operator on G, and then you apply operator A on G on the result, okay? And then you apply the third operator. Our third operator here is the bra F operator. So this is the bra operator. Clever names, bra cat. okay? So the bra operator means this. Whatever function I have inside the bra operator, okay, take the complex conjugate of that function. And if you apply it on another function, multiply the other function you're applying it to, this result, multiply that by the complex conjugate of that function inside the bra operator, and then integrate over all space. Okay? So, 
Uh, let's go back up here. How would we write this in bracket notation? I have f inside the cat, right? And then I have operator a, and then I have g inside the bra. Because I'm multiplying this result right here, this a hat f, I'm multiplying it by the complex conjugate of g and then integrating over all space. So this thing on the right hand side is g a hat f, but there's a complex conjugate outside. So this is a short way of defining uh, a Hermitian operator. Bracket f a g is equal to the complex conjugate of bracket g a f. Okay, and there really should be a hat on that a. Now you can also show that that is in fact this this one right here on the right hand side is the same thing as that. Okay, so this these two. These two are, in fact, identical, okay? This has nothing to do with A being a Hermitian operator. What makes A a Hermitian operator is if this thing on the left is equal to that. All right, so what do we mean by A hat F G over there? When you have something like that, okay, let's call... Uh, Let's use let's use another letter. Uh, let's say F1 bracket F2. What if you don't have an operator in between? What does that mean? Okay, cat F2 means multiply F2 by one, right? And then bra F1. Yeah, since you have F1 is in the bra, complex conjugate of F1 star, and you're operating that on cat F2. So whatever the complex conjugate is of the function inside the bra. Multiply it with the function that you're operating it on. And then what do you do? Integrate over all space, integral theta. So that's what that expression means. So if I were to write a hat f g in bracket notation, what does that mean? I'm going to write G, and then I take the complex conjugate of A hat F, okay? You take the complex conjugate of the whole thing. Now, you cannot take a complex conjugate of the operator and the function separately, okay? A hat F is just another function. This whole thing is just another function, okay? We do, we do not define the complex conjugate of an operator. So... Uh, that's just going to be a hat f, so we don't do this, okay? And then integral over all space, so integral d time. All right? But what is that? That is uh, multiplication. What do you know about multiplication? Commutative, right? So I can write g a hat f star d tau, right? I can do it that way. I'm just multiplying these two. But I can also say that, what is g star star? That's just g, right? The complex conjugate of the complex conjugate is the original. So g is g star star, so I can write it this way. I write the G star over here and put the star outside. Got it? Now, and then, and then I want, instead, since I want AF star, I can just now write AF here. And then the star that goes with this AF is now out here. Okay? And then I can keep the D tau in here. D tau is just... Uh, dx, dy, dz, those are real numbers, right? So I don't have to star my detail. So you can see that this is really, what's another way of writing this bracket notation right here? This is what? F goes here, A hat goes here, and G, since G has a star, so it goes inside the bra. And but I have that extra star out there. Okay, so what I've just done is I've shown 
Okay, you need time to copy. What basically I've done is I've shown that this thing right here. Oops. These two are identical. This is true even if A is not Hermitian. Okay. What must be true in order for A's Hermitian is for this one to be equal to that one. Okay? And in general, that's not going to be true. It's only going to be true if, and if your operator is Hermitian. And we want Hermitian operators in quantum mechanics. Okay? So this is the direct bracket notation for writing integrals. Okay? Prove that operator A is as defined below is not Hermitian. Okay, let's try and start with a simple example. Okay, let's prove that that the identity operator is Hermitian. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, we'll do that one later. So let's say we prove that E hat F is if E hat F is equal to F, so E is identity operator. Prove that E hat is Hermitian. What do I need to prove? F, E, G must be equal to what? G, E, F star. Okay? So, to prove something is Hermitian, switch and then star. Okay? Switch the functions and then take the star. If you get the same result, regardless, then your operator is Hermitian. So, how do we prove that? Well, let's let's write this in standard form. Integral of f star e hat g d tau, right? And what do we do next? And this, what is this integral? Integral of g star e hat f d tau, and I have to take the complex conjugate of that. Right? I have to show those two to be equal. Pause for a minute. Let's continue. So, what do we do? What does E hat G do? What does E hat do and do to G? It's an identity operator, right? So this is going to be integral of F star G D tau. Got it? And uh, I want my F to be what? To have no star, right? Or do I? Okay. Let's just... Mm, I want my E now to go with my F instead of going with my... With my G, right? So what do I need, what do I need to do? Uh, so I'm going to say... I'm going to pull out the star. I don't want my F to have a star here, right? And... I don't want, I want it to go with my E. So I'm going to pull out the star. So this is going to be integral of F G star D tau star. You still with me? Okay. F star and then G star star is G. Because all a star does is, all that does is anytime you see an I, you replace my negative I. And I is just a constant. So wherever your I shows up, you just replace by negative I when you put a star. 
detail, you don't have to star because x, y, and z are real coordinates. Okay, so you don't need to star your detail. Okay, but f and g, you'll have to explicitly star them because you don't know what they depend on. You know they depend on the coordinates, but you know you don't know the actual expression for the function. There might be an i somewhere in the function. E hat, we define it as an identity operator. All it does is it multiplies the function by one. Okay? All right, so what do we do now? Well, what is F hat? It's the same thing as E hat, right? F hat, F is just, F is just E hat times F, right? If I do E hat times F, it's still F. So that's E hat F. And then that's G star, D tau, integral, and then the whole thing is star. What do I get now? This is integral of one. E hat F star. Oh no, let me switch them around. Okay. I'm going to put the G star over here on the left. G star. E hat F d tau and I still have that star on the outside right but that's what this is right that's the same okay so basically what are we saying then that the identity operator is a linear operator. So in other words, when you say something like f hat f g in a bracket, if I switch g and f, what do I get? I just have to put a complex conjugate sign there. Then those two would be equal. <laughs> if you switch two functions in a bracket where there's no fun where there's no operator in between, you can switch those two functions. Just make sure you put that star on the outside. Because that's what basically this is. Because this basically is what? This is just G, right? So F star G, and that's G star F. So this expression right here basically says that the identity operator is a Hermitian operator. So if I were to ask you, what's the integral of, OK. If I say, Integral of, let's say, f1 star f2 d tau, okay? Is that equal to integral of f2 star f1 d tau? No. What would make what would make them equal? I need to put star on. When I switch two functions, I have to put a star. Now, if there's another op if there's an operator between them, and I and and I can still do that, putting a star makes them equal. Then you say that that operator is a Hermitian operator. In fact, here you're, it's the identity operator that's implied to be a Hermitian operator, right? Okay.